Well, my next guest may be commonly referred to as Canada's most celebrated transsexual, but there's nothing common about writer and performer Nina Arsenault. Between 1998 and 2006, the performance artist underwent 60 cosmetic procedures to turn herself from a, quote, awkward man into a jaw-dropping silicone bombshell. But her gender transition was not just about becoming a woman. It was about becoming her conception of the perfect woman and achieving a personal ideal of beauty, silicone, and surgically enhanced. Nina's journey is now chronicled in her intense solo show, The Silicone Diaries, an autobiographical account of her adventures attempting to achieve inner and outer beauty. After a sold-out run and rave reviews last year, The Silicone Diaries is once again playing at Buddies in Bad Times Theatre in Toronto and is due to hit Montreal and other Canadian cities in the months ahead. But first... Nina Arsenault joins me live in Studio Q. Hello. Hello, how are you? Very nice to have you here. Thank you very much. You begin the Silicon Diaries with this memory of you as a young boy in small town Ontario being mesmerized by a mannequin at Zeller's. Uh, looking back, what was it about that mannequin that so deeply caught your attention? The perfection of her face. There's no doubt about it. Just the, the, the design of her face that you know, you can look at a doll, and if you stare at it long enough, they can almost become real. I was mesmerized by that. And is that what it felt like for you? What were you feeling when you saw that mannequin, you saw that perfection? Well, I also just think that, you know, as a young boy, I knew that I was a girl inside. And so that just felt like everything that I wanted to be. But a mannequin is not a real woman. So uh, yeah. what version or whose version of the feminine ideal were you entranced with? Well, I think it's really important to remember that when um, I talk about that monologue, that's like one image I saw as a child that moved me. Um, I totally understand that that's not a real woman. And um, there's many different beauty ideals that I've been influenced from over the years. And mannequins are just one of them. The other ones might be like... Um, uh, the women in the 1970s pornographic magazines that I looked at, um, penthouse magazines, or um, celebrity women as well. Mm. Yeah. Some would say none of those people are real women either. But we, well, let me come back to that. Let me, let me just pick up on something you just said about being trapped inside your body. Yeah. Uh, transsexual people sometimes say they felt like one gender inside trapped in the body of another. Was that what it was like for you? Yeah, I would say that's the short answer of it. And how and when did you first decide to change your body? Well, I first knew that I was in the wrong body at about three. I knew that, you know, everyone thought I was a boy and I wanted to be a girl. And um, then you, when... You, and you consciously knew that at the yeah. age of three? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, our gender is such an integral, primal part of us yeah. that if that's off, you know, if everyone's treating you like a boy and you know that you're a girl, you're going to know that like right away. There's, there's no doubt about it. And then I didn't start changing things till I was about, I don't know, 24 or 25 years old. And tell me about that decision where you finally say, well, I'm, I actually want to change my body. Well, I thought that if I, if I didn't actually change my body, it would mean that I, I just could never be happy. I couldn't imagine ever being happy living as a male. So I started altering things. The problem was is that after I grew up, I looked so masculine looking and my forehead and my jawline. And if people come and see my show, they see images of what I used to look like mm -hmm. as a guy. Mm -hmm. It's like quite radically different. How, how, Nina, how much of your physical journey was about simply passing as a woman and how much of it was about becoming this vision you had of the idealized woman? Well, at, f at first, I think I did just want to be a woman. I wanted to be a normal woman and incorporate into society. But, um, you know, I never really achieved it in a way. I, I almost achieved it, but I, I never really was passable enough that I could fool people all the time. And, um, you know, I could look in the mirror and maybe still see masculine features and stuff upon my face and that was very upsetting for me and I could still see the, the man underneath me. So I made the decision to not really to achieve the feminine ideal. I just made the decision that I was going to shatter and eradicate all the masculinity as much as possible. Well, 
so you work at several jobs, and, and you took many physical gambles in the process of doing this. You, you undergo 60 cosmetic procedures. Yes. You even had black mar- market silicone injections, which I didn't even know a lot about until I saw your show. You risked a lot. What did you tell yourself along the way you were risking this for? Well, I want to say this about black market injections. Um, because I've had silicone injections, and they're not FDA-approved, and... Um, they won't be FDA approved in North America ever probably because there's just not simply enough women who want to make their hips and ass bigger in that way. Mm. So there's not a there's not a market for it. We live in a capitalist world. There's a few transsexuals who want to have that. And so there is an underground trade amongst that, amongst transsexuals for that. It's hard to get a hold of. Absolutely it's not always safe. Um but I think the the people that I, I went to, um, I knew what I was doing. I'd seen their work. I made sure I trusted them. I researched it. Um, I knew the procedure. So absolutely, I was taking risks, but I did everything possible to minimize mm. each risk. But you know it can't be good for your body to do that. I mean, I'm assuming to have that much surgery done and that much alteration. Well, I was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place, Shion. I was living in a male body was so difficult for me. And to see the masculinity on my face every day, to have that reflected back at me when I walked down the street and talked to people Mm -hmm. and um, to be discriminated against and have people hate you is one thing. But when you hate yourself, you're kind of agreeing to it. It puts put me in a very uncomfortable position to just be public in my body so I decided that I was going to like myself first and um, yeah absolutely I had to risk things along the way but you don't end up liking yourself you want to keep you, you do end up keeping well you uh, in your in your show oh it, that's it, not true what? I don't think the final monologue's about that at all that final monologue is about well the I haven't hunt. got to the final monologue I'm talking about along the way you want you keep wanting to get work done right um, and it's something of a, an obsession. You even uh, suggest at times during on the path during the show. Is well, that... obsession can be a good thing. Okay. Obsession on the good side. You know, my obsessions when they're on the good side, they're passionate things that I love, that I'm obsessed with in good possible ways. When my self esteem gets low, those obsessions can be, you know, dangerous. I don't think I'm different than anyone else. I'm. I'm sure. You know, even you with your career and your work. And I'm sure there's been times where it's been an obsessive thrill. It's been a wild thrill (laughs) ride. And I'm sure it's been times where it's almost beaten you into the ground. Absolutely correct. You stick with it. Yes. That's love. But have you, uh, do you ever feel like you've gone too far? For the people out there who would say, well, she's gone too far. This is too much. What do you mean gone too far? Well, in terms of the, the, um, the, when you have 60 cosmetic surgeries in terms of the de- desire to want to keep uh, well adjusting. i don't think i've been reasonable i don't think i've made the choices a normal person would make yeah and i don't think that i'm normal do you know but i don't you know if you mean if i've gone too far for yourself you haven't gone too far well i'm a very happy person i like the way my life is going so happy is good yeah in the silicone diaries you recall an encounter you had a couple years ago with rocker tommy lee i've got to ask you about this it's an ultra uh, supper club here in toronto ultra where where he ended up sitting on his lap (laughs) i mean he summoned you over to join him not knowing i guess about your transition it it made headlines you say you wondered what it meant that (laughs) pamela anderson's ex was attracted to you what do you think it meant well, I think there's lots of things that are fake about her too. Her her hair and the makeup and the attitude and um, you know, the implants. And um I think a lot of men fi- have, have found that very sexual. It's very sexually attractive. Look, I mean, I don't know how to is there What are you trying to say? Well, what I'm partly trying to say is would you be um uh, unsatisfied it's, it's another another side of the question I was asking earlier about whether uh, it, it, the transition is about just wanting to feel like a woman or, or needing to be some idealized form of, of beauty uh, a, a beauty queen well that's would what you I be, chose but that's would you be chose. happy to just be a um, a, a, a normal woman or do I you, wanted to be special you want to be a br- I wanted to be Pam special. Anderson uh, you want to stand out I made that out. choice yeah I made that choice to be special I think I'd be insulting your intelligence if, if I if I said otherwise so yeah Thank you. I think you just called me intelligent, sort of. Well, I think you want to be special, too. Of course I do. (laughs) 
<laughs> what do you what do you say to those who see you in your work as regressive, as playing into the idea of women as objects for male pleasure? Well, I don't think I am an object for male pleasure. I certainly have objectified my body, but it's been for my own ed- my own pleasure and my own empowerment. Um, certainly, there's been disempowering moments along the way. I don't know. I think there. 1970s feminist scholars who do think that m- me and my work is regressive, but I think that they're talking about a, a feminism that's decades old. I think they're out of touch. Hmm. I think they're old fashioned. And I think that feminism should definitely be about choice, should, um, should be about women having as many choices as possible. And I was in a certain position where I felt like I was in a rock, between a rock and a hard place. And, uh, I have every right to pursue pleasure, to be sexual, to, you know, put my life together in a way that uh, excites and empowers me. I don't know why that would be regressive to anyone else. I'm not, I'm not going around giving other women plastic surgery. I'm just doing it for myself. Okay. You're also an artist. Uh, there have been artists before male and female who've used plastic surgery as an artistic medium in which their bodies become the art project object yeah do you relate to that absolutely yes yeah 100 percent. like the artist orlan um you know is a big influence um she's a french artist who documented her plastic surgeries Mm. and that was the she's the first one who gave me the idea to actually start documenting my my procedures and um you know, and when I started having the work done, there was a certain point where doctors said, you won't look natural if we do this. And I was like, I'm going to push it and get just a little bit artistic with things. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you feel like your personality has been redefined along with your physical self? Absolutely. Yeah. How so? Um, well, I, I think at each step of the at each step of the way, when I had procedures done, it changed me. It, it can't it can't not change you if you get bigger breasts bigger breast implants people treat you different and then when people treat you different all the time mm. you have to react to it you have to deal with it and then that you know eventually makes you different your show is quite emotional and powerful especially toward the end when you talk about grappling with aging and your struggle to deal with uh, uh, what might be considered an addiction to surgery what do you see when you look in the mirror today Well, I see my face, but it's so normalized to me. I I look at it every day. Um, You know, I I think that each of us look at our faces every day. It's just your face. You know, it's so so normal. But you do say your body feels like it's been getting into a car accident over and over. Are you are you comfortable in your body? Do you want to have more procedures now? Probably I'll do little nips and tucks and maintain, you know, absolutely. But like nothing radical. I'm sure, I'm sure what you've been through, Nina, what's your concept of beauty now? What does it mean to you today? Well, I've got lots of different concepts of beauty. In some ways, I look at, um, in some ways, I think everyone has their own beauty. You know, I, I have that conception of beauty, that um, everyone is beautiful. And then I have this other conception of beauty that really has to do with line, form, mass and structure Mm. which is really not connected to the heart it's connected to the eye and um so i have those two conceptions of beauty Uh, this is amazing line from you where you say it's your privilege to live and to suffer with beauty that's right yeah tell me just deconstruct that line for me if you will well every day i make myself up and every day i do my makeup and I deal with people who think that I'm too over the top, or I deal with feminists who don't like what I've done. Um, and yet, in other ways, I, I'm treated like such a special person in culture. I have so many different privileges in my life. And then also, so many people against me. So I just think that's my role in life. If it was as simple as I could give it up, I would. But I I can't. I believe that this is my spiritual path. I'm really glad that you came in today. Thank you for this. And, And your show is absolutely riveting.